Hey, we'd like to take a minute to thank our sponsor, Isotope, makers of software and plugins for audio repair, mixing, and mastering. We use Isotope products here at the High Gain. It's an important part of how we've been able to bottle pure podcast gold week after week. And guess what? Isotope offers one free month of Music Production Suite Pro, which has all the tools you need to mix, master, and repair audio. Also, you can get 10% off all other software using the promo code FRET10. That's F-R-E-T-1-0. All of this is at isotope.com, I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com. Hey, this is Ed Peterson. And this is John Kiltica, Ed. John, it's the High Gain Podcast. It is the High Gain Podcast, Ed. John, we're in the same room in beautiful West Seattle. Yeah, I'm staring at your ugly mug right now. Angelic over here. Oh, yeah. What are we going to talk about today, John? We're going to talk about guitars, Ed. Exclusively. Exclusively guitars. Okay. Did you get any new guitar pedals or amps or anything cool like that? I did. Oh. This week, Ed? Yeah. I was fortunate enough to find one of my dream guitars. Oh? And we'll have to talk about that. But I should just say, yeah, we've got a full slate today. Oh. You know why? Well, uh, no. Do you see the shirt I am wearing? <laughs> yes. It says ABBA. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know why I'm wearing my prized ABBA shirt today? I feel like just to antagonize me. <laughs> Is that the right answer? <laughs> We have a guest. Yeah? All the way from Sweden. Someone from ABBA is on the show? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Superfan Nicholas from Malmö, Sweden. Hi there. Hi, Nicholas. And I was stoked to hear the ABBA song in the episode recently. I've been missing the feud about ABBA. I know. Since we went in lockdown and we're in separate places, John wouldn't specifically antagonize me with ABBA stuff. And it's back. You're not close enough for, like, bringing out speakers in the yard and just blasting it? Exactly. Do you like ABBA, Nicholas? Yeah, definitely. See? I am probably a believer in that whole Dave Grohl thing. Everyone likes ABBA. They are a very difficult band not to like. I just feel like you go a little heavy on your love of ABBA, John. Hey, man, I'm just sitting here waiting for the new ABBA to drop. (laughs) That's been, like, imminent for two and a half years or something. I don't know what the hell's going on. Perfectionists, those guys. It feels like Axl Rose is the quick guy in this comparison. Exactly. (laughs) He's effective. Yeah. I'll give you a tip, Ed, to learn to like them. Their bass player is highly loved among bass players, especially in Sweden, I guess. I just saw a video recently of Lutko when he was doing a playthrough of one of the songs, and that's really, really good. Yeah. It's worth listening to just for him. He's a ripper, huh? Yeah. All right. Um, I got to tell you something. Normally, I play a beverage song live, and then I might go back after the fact and kind of spice it up with additional tracks. This week, we asked Nicholas to pick the song. He chose a song, and I can't do it live because my Swedish sucks. So I pre-recorded it. I'm so looking forward to hear you trying this out. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Beverages. Well, what did you think of that? I, I'm smiling so wide, <laughs> my headphones almost fell off. Have you heard the band Bob Hund from Malmo? Because you really made that sound like Bob Hund was playing Edward Persson's Lirigan von Ovan. Bob Hund like Bob's dog? Yeah, Bob the dog. Or just Bob dog, actually. Bob dog. Huh. It's a brilliant band. So how was that? Have Ed heard the original? No. I think maybe Ed needs to hear the original to truly appreciate what it is I've done here. I, I kind of have no frame of reference. I think it's recorded in the 40s. The original. Okay. Oh. Yeah, and leading girls 
sig på från skåne En skåning som ni vet alltid tryd That's great Fast jeg er så nære sol og måne Jeg sitter sikkert på min gosa ryd Långt under mig det ligger som en tavla Det vakreste i verden man kan se Både skog og sjø og strand Blir et enda sagoland yeah, it was amazing, John. Thank you. So this is like the unofficial anthem of the region I'm from, South uh, Skåne, the south of Sweden. You've probably heard on the show I've been a little dismissive of the south. Yep. Or Mississippi, maybe specifically. <laughs> is it like that? There's no similarities to the U.S. like legally and stuff with having different laws and stuff in different states. Okay. This is just regions and we have some differences in how it's controlled by different political parties and stuff. But you like to tell Mississippi to go fuck yourself? Yeah. That's exactly the same thing, but very warm-heartedly. In Sweden? I picture the north as being like our south. No, I would say the north is more like north of Canada. Like it's really, really big. There's not very many people living there compared to the size of it. Yeah, in the U.S., those places that are less populated tend to be a little backward. <laughs> <laughs> well, the stereotypical northern Swede is more like very, very silent. They have a special way of speaking, and they pretty much don't speak. That's the stereotype. That sounds great. What I've learned, if you compare like left and right politically, yeah, it's a really strong worker union Ooh. leftist in the north. Oh, love it. That's working people. They like work in the mines. Yeah. It's a strong feeling for the union up there. I think I'm ready to go to the north. Yeah. Have you seen Dead Snow? The Norwegian movie, yeah. Is it like that? <laughs> yeah. It's snow. I don't know if there's dead people. <laughs> Nazi zombies that rise up out of the snow. <laughs> I have a beverage today. This is a little container that I've been putting my special juices in. The special juice. Yes. Yeah. A couple of grapefruit, an apple, a pear, a bunch of ginger, a bunch of kale, two carrots, and a lemon. That's what's in this. And this is made with a new machine, right? With my new machine. Yes. Stainless yes. steel. It just chews this shit up. Is it good? Delicious. Nicholas, what do you got for a beverage? Well, I would love to have a coffee, but since it's like half past nine in the evening here... I went to a corner shop, which is Arabic, and I just found these. It's called Barbican. It's malt beverage, non-alcoholic. So I guess it's like Muslim beer. Oh, yeah. But it's with fruit flavors. So I'm having one pomegranate right now. I just finished a lemon flavor. I also bought a malt flavor, which I guess is just neutral. And then I have a pineapple flavor. That sounds great. So what are you drinking, John? I have black coffee, and I have a pomegranate blackberry probiotic beverage drink keeping my gut in check your gut health plus one for the pomegranate yeah yeah ed do you know why nicholas is here to talk about guitars yes nicholas is multifaceted okay he is part of the malmo guitar verkstead that's a guitar shop it's a guitar repair shop that's literally what it means that's yeah, literally yeah what it says oh okay not only that yeah. He is in a great band called Liar, Thief, Bandit. Yep. Maybe you've heard of them. I have. Have you seen the name of your vacation photos? Ooh, yeah. My vacation photos and your band have like a weird overlap. Yeah. The new album is out and Ed's Palm Springs star picture is on the cover. Yeah. And y'all released a bunch of singles leading up to it. Yeah, it actually evolved into a design concept for the album and the singles. All our design is based on Ed's picture from Joshua Tree. Yeah, it was actually the first astrophotography I had tried. I thought they turned out pretty good. And I remember I asked you, is this really heavily run through Photoshop or something? Yeah, my daughter and I went out there at 2 in the morning. It's kind of spooky in Joshua Tree at 2 in the morning. We just set the camera up with 30-second exposures, and I just ran across the desert with these LED lights. Being chased by wolves. <laughs> exactly. That's probably what makes them look so cool. John has a guitar. I was going to bring a Stratocaster, an Ingve Malmsteen Stratocaster. Oh, 
I know you and he are good, good friends, right? Yeah, definitely. Grew up together. Yeah. My colleague Max really, really loves Ingvar Malmsteen. It's his, one of his biggest idols. What do people generally in Sweden think of Ingve? Uh, if they know about him, he's a twat, but <laughs> also amazing guitar player, <laughs> probably. Is he? He's iconic. That's my answer. This is a safe space. I really don't like that kind of metal and also super shreddery stuff. But some respect for him for the playing and pretty much inventing it. Sure. How would you classify Liar Thief Bandit? I would like to say um, high energy rock and roll. Scandinavian rock and roll is somewhat a, a genre. But modern version of it with a lot of catchy choruses and um, not too gritty. But we try to make a mix between that. Hello, cat. Yeah, exactly. There's a cat. Yeah, that's Junior the cat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, today I have a T.B. Jones guitar. Are you familiar with T.B. Jones pickups? Yes. You find them in Gretsch's all the time. You find them in Fender's increasingly more often. But this is an entire guitar made by T.B. Jones. I wasn't aware of that, actually, so I looked it up. T.B. Jones is an actual person. His name is Thomas Vincent Jones. He's from California originally, but Ed, you might be interested to know. Yeah. Old T.B. Jones. Yeah. Currently resides out on Poolsbow Island. Oh, no kidding? Yeah. Local guy to us, Nicholas. Wow. Is that West Seattle? Off the coast of West Seattle. Oh. Wow. We should take a ferry out there and have a chat with T.B. Yeah. That would be cool. This guitar is called a Spectrasonic Supreme. It's loosely based on the old K-Harmony type guitars that the Chicago boys were making, Ed. Sure. Chambered body, single cutaway, two T.B. Jones pickups in it, and a Bigsby. Listen to this. It's got that kind of filter y sound. So, how does this all start? Our man T.B. Jones is working down in California. Okay. He's working in shops, doing repairs. Sure. Much like Nicholas does. Oh. Occasionally, dudes will come into the shop who are known. One such person was Brian Setzer of the Stray Cats. Yeah. T.V. had a chance to work on some of Setzer's guitars and got to know him a little bit. Okay. And through his association with him, then developed an interest in pickups. So he decided to go from repair into investigating what this thing called a guitar pickup is and does. Since he knew Brian Setzer, he started with those pickups, the Filtertrons and the Hilotrons, all those great old Gretsch pickups. You know, this weekend I watched the movie The Wicker Man. Yes. It's very good. Is it the Nicolas Cage version? Not the Nick Cage version. The earlier one is what I watched. <laughs> and Britt Eklund is the female lead Ooh. who went on to marry Peter Sellers, became a Bond girl, then later married her last husband, Slim Jim Phantom. Of the Stray Cats? Of the Stray Cats. Wow. Did you already know that about Brit Eklund before you've seen that movie? No, I had no idea. Bringing it back around, Nicholas. That's how we do it here at the High Gain Podcast. Yeah. You probably know her too, right? Yeah, sure. She lives just next door. She's from Stockholm. Oh, she's from the north, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stockholm is the Mississippi of uh, Sweden. <laughs> so, he starts taking apart old Filtertrons, our guy TV. Yeah. Kind of redesigning them and looking at the old specs. Until one day, he does a kind of blind test with Setzer. He says, okay, I've got some designs I've been working on. Why don't we compare them to the old Gretsch pickups and see what you think? So they did that, and hands down, Brian Setzer chose the T.B. Jones pickups. And that's when T.B. Jones thought, maybe I'm onto something. Maybe I should just yeah. go into this. So he did, and he founds T.B. Jones Incorporated in 1993. I'm into it. Can I ask you something, Nicholas? Sure. That's why I'm here, I guess. In the shop, do y'all ever rewind pickups? Is that a thing you do? I try to repair it if I can. If I see like a clear damage on the coil, I try to unwrap it, just the first layers. But if that's not possible, if it's deeper down, I send it to Lundgren Guitar Pickups. Okay. The Swedish guy who makes boutique hand-wound pickups. Huh. How many instruments do you get into the shop? 
Well, both me and Max are working full time since uh, the pandemic hit. Before that, I used to work as a backline tech also part time. And of course, also out quite a lot with Lyathit Bandit playing. You guys moved, right? Yeah, moved from uh, 20 square meters to 220 square meters. Whoa, much bigger. Pretty much by accident, I ended up at Tambourine Studios. Right. On a party one time at friends playing there. And I just look at, wait, this is very close to my home. I want to have a small workbench just for my hobby because I was working in a music store as a guitar tech and I've been doing that for 15 years. I, I got the workbench in their basement and then a couple of months later, the store owner decided to sell the shop. So um, I lost my job and then I was like, wait, I have a workbench. I know that there is need in the town for guitar repairs. I'm going to start a shop. And I tried and it worked. When was that? 2016. That is awesome. Wow, cool. I thought it would take like five years before I could do it full time, but it took six, and six seven months. <laughs> and then I had Max as an apprentice, and after less than a year, he also started working as his main job. Don't you have a third? I'm very keen on making sure everybody here feels welcome, so people don't feel like, oh, you're only working with the pros, or you're only working with rich people, or if you have vintage guitars. I want like everybody, especially like girls. I know they're often... Um, inconvenient going to music stores because they feel treated differently. I want to make sure they don't feel that here. Yes. So I have found a customer that really gets it. I'm going to ask her next time if she want to come here as an apprentice. And uh, she did. Oh, that's awesome. She was great, yeah. But she also studying full time, so she couldn't find the time for it. That's a shame. I'm still looking for somebody. We're busy and we're happy with it being this busy. If somebody shows up and preferably not a guy like us, that would be great. You're out, John. Ah, uh, tough. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Our man TV Jones. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, that guy. I'm trying to weave it in. I love it. Just for a second here, I'll play the clean tone. Just okay. I'm on the bridge right now. Nick. And then, of course, in the middle. That sounded a little stray catty. So, Brian Setzer digs those pickups so much, of course he runs and tells Gretch, hey, there's this guy over here making pickups that are awesome, and he knows everything there is to know about the old Filtertrons also. Right. So then Gretch is like, will you make pickups for us, but will you help us design a guitar? Oh. So T.B. Jones helps Gretsch design a guitar in 2000 called the Spectrasonic, and it looks just like the one I'm holding right now. But it was a Gretsch. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. They made this thing for like five years. Okay. With the Gretsch name on it. They made this one. They made a baritone and a bass. Okay. In 2005, Gretsch discontinued it. T.B. Jones took it up. Made a few improvements here and there, and in 2006, reissues it. And that's what I'm holding in my hand here, the Spectrasonic Supreme. Oh, man. It's Supreme, Ed. I'm looking at a Gretsch one on Reverb, and it looks like the only sort of difference is the neck is bound on yours. The one on Reverb right now, the neck is not bound. What are the fret markers? Oh, the fret markers are dots. These have lines that go in from the top. Yeah. Our man TV calls these shoestring potato fret markers. <laughs> I read that, and I was hoping you could explain why it's called shoestring potato. I don't know. Is that a French fry? <laughs> yeah. Instead of the big, thick French fries, they're little skinny things. Okay. Where would you get those? You would get them in a school cafeteria. Is it like a snack? not a snack because you actually deep fry them we have something it's called pommes pins Ooh. it's like really small french fries but they're crispy all the way through it's only the crispy part oh and shaped like a really small french fry you can buy them in bags cold eat them like crisps these would be hot and you'd have them with a hamburger or something it's a great name for an inlay yeah yeah speaking of the hamburgers <laughs> You know, on the Big Mac that you get at McDonald's, they have that crazy-ass sauce? Special. Putting air quotes up. Yeah, the special McDonald's sauce? Not into it. If you are in Sweden, yeah, they've got this dressing called Amerikansk. Yeah? It's like the McDonald's special sauce in a bottle. Sounds gross. Squeeze it out all over your hamburgers. Sounds terrible. 
for me, that is like the classic, what does hamburger dressing smells like or taste like? Yeah, like that, a pink sauce. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I've never thought of it like anything typical to Big Mac or to McDonald's. I just figure like, yeah, this is hamburger dressing. I guess it's like mayo and ketchup mixed up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, special. Very special. Okay. This thing also has an ebony fretboard. It's a set neck. Yeah. It's got the flat top, flat body. It's reminiscent of a Les Paul Jr., but bigger. Yeah, and it's all chambered out. It's not a heavy instrument. Tell me about that. Uh, it's not a Bigsby. It is a Bigsby. Oh, it is. Is it a round one, the arm? It's the flat one. Oh, it's the flat one. Yeah, and like the tailpiece. It's got like an egg shape in it, keeping the food metaphors going. <laughs> yeah, McMuffin Bigsby. Exactly. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. These are made in Japan. They're made by the same guys that do all the high-end Gretsch work. Okay. Ah, so it's built at the same factory that build the Japanese Gretsches. Yeah. And so this thing's about 2200 bucks. Yeah. And usually, they all get shipped back to Polsbo, out in the water there, where TV himself, the man, does the final setup and cuts the nuts, each and every one. That's crazy. As a guitar tech, I just love this fact. There are some companies that build in Asia, and then they ship it, and it has a nice label set up in the U.S., and it feels like, yeah, somebody put a sticker on it and looked at it and then packed it in the bag again. Yep. Hey, John. Yes. Do we have any Liar Thief Bandit? Oh, we do. Oh, you do? Could we listen to some? Yeah. Nicholas, what song should we play a little bit of? Uh, I would say Good Enough is a good showcase for the album. Good Enough. It's super put-your-fist-in-the-air rock. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a genre. Andrew WK? Ooh, Whoa, yeah. yeah. Who's he engaged to now? He just got engaged. Congrats, Andrew WK. Good for him. Congratulations. Old W. I'll take it as a compliment, even though I wish you would have said that it sounded like Andrew WK. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, but that's what I'm thinking when you say fist-pumping rock. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, man, that bass line in there. Yeah. You've got some grind going on there. What's your rig? There's a part where you're clearly ripping. Uh, I think on the recording, actually, it was just a dark glass Alpha Omega bass distortion and DSM Noisemaker Omnicab Sim, which is a brilliant pedal, fully analog cabinet simulator, which makes everything sound big and nice and more articulate also. Do you mean you go from that into an actual amp? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's what I thought you were saying. On the recording, it's an old vintage Dynacord Bass King, but a home-built 115 or 112, I don't really remember. It was stuff from the studios where we recorded it. Now I have Ampeg 1x12 and 2x12 cabs, because I really like the sound from them, really clear and articulate. <laughs> Let's see how well these TV Jones pickups take the dirt. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, 
That's pretty good. I really like them. I would say they're ballsy. It's really like thick and impressive sounding. The neck pickup just sounds so good. I think I'm going to have a look at getting some TV Jones maybe to the store. It seems to really respond. Go uh, No Sputnik and 1981. Listen to that. I just have to say, Mike uh, in Lighty Bandit, he actually bought a Phantom Operator just because he heard it on your show. Yeah, I'm waiting for him to incorporate that into the band. Yeah, that's the recovery stuff. Yeah, those guys are great. Those guys are here in Seattle. When you come back out, we can take a trip over. Pick you up some pedals. Yeah. Where do you guys play in Sweden? Like, do you do mini tours to various cities in Sweden, like Gothenburg, maybe? We have played in Gothenburg. Actually managed to do it 2020. There was like a window between restrictions. We actually could do shows for 50 people. Oh. Uh, but the thing with Sweden is we have not very many people living here. Like if you compare to Germany, where we do most of our gigs, we have like 10 times the population in Germany. It's like 90 million people instead of 9 million in Sweden. But they are 75% of the area. Right. You can come to a town you've never heard of in Germany and it's just like, oh, this is a big town. And there's plenty of people. You can play there on a Wednesday in a bar. And there can be people. Yeah. In Sweden, we have it uh, very comfortable here. If you want to start a playing band with finding gear and finding rehearsal rooms. And there's so many people playing here. If you're into music, you probably also are playing. Which means nobody comes to the shows because everybody <laughs> has their own show or in the rehearsal room. <laughs> Everyone loves music, so they can't go see music because they're too busy making music. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys record your album at Tambourine? Yeah. Is that the same place where the Cardigans did their stuff? Yeah. Did you know that, Ed? I didn't. Funny thing is they started in the really early 90s. Yeah, 30 years ago, 1991. But the whole studio has a vibe of being from the 60s or 70s. Oh, that's cool. When they started in the 90s, everybody wanted digital stuff and modern stuff. So nobody wanted the old vintage stuff. So they bought the vintage stuff because they was like, we like this old sound. Yeah. And they made this their thing, not having the new synthesizer or digital console right which actually has in the long run probably paid off incredibly well yeah and they created a 90s swedish pop sound do you think that kind of grew the music scene in malmo i moved here 10 years ago i'm from when i were in the north part of the south part <laughs> so i don't really know malmo back then but as i understood from reading some books and stuff about it it's been like a, a workers city especially this part of town where i'm in and the studio is in it hasn't been that much music scene also it's still like 300,000 people here huh. there's always been clubs of course and it's been a music scene but it's not widely known for it until you guys got there yeah you got the liar thief guys i would say those guys got there the band Eggstone that started Tambourine Studios and still run it. They were probably a real big factor of making Malmö to a music scene. Don't sell yourself short. Come on. <laughs> they went ahead to lay down the infrastructure. Exactly. So when they got there, it would be all set up. That's what I'm saying. I've been there for four years working there every day because we were renting a room to have the guitar repair shop. But I had a week off spending in the same building in the same studio at Tambourine Studios. So I was just spending my vacation week 20 meters down the hall. But it felt like, oh, I'm in a studio now for a week. That's great. I didn't feel like I was just next door to my actual job. The album just dropped two weeks ago or something, right? Nine days ago. Congrats. And if you go anywhere, like liarthiefbandit.com? Yeah. But you're also on Facebook and everywhere. We're like you guys. Maybe not all the things that you are on. Yeah, you probably don't have a Pinterest. Not yet. But yeah, you can find us. Yeah, you've still got some of the vinyls left. Yeah. I forget which one I ordered. We made both a blue and a red to match your photo. You, you chose the colors of the vinyls without knowing it. It looks amazing. Thank you very much, Ed, for um, taking those photos and letting us use them. We're very happy. Absolutely. Oh, what you should do, go on tour with Phoebe Bridgers, and it'll just be this, like, Joshua Tree concept. And you too. You too, Phoebe Bridgers, Liar Thief Bandit. All on one ticket. 
That's what I'm saying. That's what he's saying. What do you think about that? There's no downside. No. You know what I think, Nicholas? No. I think you did a great job today. Thank you. I think you did a great job. Oh, that's what I was looking for. Okay, we need to get your perspective on this. Living abroad from us, how would you grade Ed's performance today? (laughs) (laughs) It goes to 11. Oh my gosh. None more black. John, you did really good too. (laughs) You go to 11. Yeah. Nicholas goes to 11. You kind of like, I don't know, a six. A solid six? Yeah. Definitely, John. Yeah. Okay, Spotify, for listening to Nicholas's band, Liar Thief Bandit. Deadlights. Yeah. New album. It is fantastic. Everybody should get it and buy it and do it. Whether or not you have a vinyl record player, you should just go to liarthiefbandit.com and buy one of the vinyls, because then you get, as a bonus... An Ed Peterson picture, yes, artwork, and an album. Win-win. Yeah, I would say if you want to buy Ed's art, you can go to <laughs> lightyfbandit.com and you can order his art really cheap. Exactly. Compared to buying a picture. And as a bonus, you get an album. Yeah, and I love it that there's been no gongs in this episode. Oh, no. Our man Edvard Persson. Oh. Who's that? The guy who wrote the Skone song. Oh, no. Yeah. When did we lose him? I believe it was 1957. <laughs> A long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Born in 1888. Which is the year that the Filtertrons came out. 1888? No, 57. <laughs> <laughs> Invented by Ray Butts. Yeah. Great name. Oh, no. Yeah. We better tell people where to find us before this gets ugly real fast. Yeah, yeah. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, thehighgain.com. Uh-huh. Look us up. You'll find us anywhere. Or go to Linktree. Oh, that Linktree thing. Yeah? Yeah, that's very cool. Look for The High Gain on Linktree, and then you can see all those links we don't have to talk about. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Nice work, Nicholas. Thank you so much for coming to visit us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's been an honor coming here after all these years listening oh, to you guys. Oh, we appreciate that. I remember how stoked me and Max were a couple of years ago when you actually gave us a shout out the first time. Man. That was a huge experience in our small shop. I cannot blame you. A shout out from John and Ed? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas. Bye. Okay, bye. See ya.